Hello, this is Casey Labs, and this is the second in a series on how we get power out of a parallel resonance circuit. You might call it resonance power, some people call it free energy. I have here some inductance inductors. The, there's various different types of inductors. Some of them are air, air core, some of them are metal core. Some are used for cars, some are used in this particular case. The big one on the right is a microwave oven transformer, and then I've got several others there that are used for uh, various little experiments. It turns out, when I went through school, they taught me about inductors, and as you can see, the sign for an inductor is right here. A little squirrely spring. They taught me about inductors, something called imaginary voltage. And I never really understood what it meant in the books and from the professor. And I don't think they really understood what it was talking about either. Their imaginary voltage is very real. This particular voltage comes from the induced current in the coil. Like, for instance, you take a coil and you put a modulating or alternating current through it, you will induce a voltage that is a certain phase difference out of out of uh, from the original voltage and this voltage depending upon how you arrange it can be many times the original voltage and if you're not careful in your circuit with a large inductor you can actually induce voltages to go through the rest of your circuit as they try to get back and fill up this little current loop here when we talk about Faraday's law, we have Faraday's law down here. Faraday's law is dependent upon the inductance, the change in the current over the change in time. This is where you get your V sub zero. That will go in here. It turns out that if you tweak this equation around, you can get it to look and use look like uh, V sub i is equal to Q times V sub zero. Now, one of the things that folks don't always understand is, is that more voltage can be induced in an inductor than is put across the inductor. And it just takes a little change in that voltage and you can generate a ton of voltage, a uh, ton of imaginary voltage, shall we say, across that inductor. This is the foundation of getting more power out of a system than you actually put in. Uh, most people don't believe that, however, uh, I'm showing it to you right here. This particular voltage can be greater than the applied voltage. When we talk about the efficiency of a coil, we have, a, we have to deal with the Q. The Q is equal to 2 pi times the frequency times the inductor divided by the resistance. I've got several coils here. This particular coil has got a huge amount of resistance, somewhere around 2800 ohms. So when you're looking at how efficient a coil is, 2800 ohms in here means that this Q is going to be really low unless you've got a real high frequency. I've got another one here that's uh, got a real good Q on the top, somewhere around 95, but then it goes down to about 4 down here with these larger coils. And so when you're dealing with Q, and we're going to talk about Q later because Q is important in determining how much power comes out of your resonance, you're going to need to know about Q, and we'll go through this theoretically later. Just keep in mind that the applied voltage looks like this. Whenever you get an imaginary voltage, or the Faraday's law voltage, it will look something like this. And depending, this is actually the continuous state. I'm going to show you later about the discontinuous state. In other words, you put a spike on there and we'll see what happens. So, this is Casey Labs signing out.